Next step is necessary for building the 3D model. You're building mesh. Mesh is, uh, I will show you here. Mesh, is, mesh connects the, the points that you created uh, during the uh, dense point cloud generation and creates so-called faces. Faces are usually triangles. Uh, and you have two modes for that. Arbitrary is for any kind of object. So you, you create uh, three, full 3D uh, mesh. So you also see here what's underneath uh, the, this little object. And it has very high memory consumption. So what we are going to be using, we're going to be using the mode for planar surfaces that it's called high field. And it should be selected for, for aerial photography. It has low memory consumption and it just doesn't take into account those uh, spots that are underneath the objects here. It just creates, a, it's called also 2.5D. Um, uh, mesh. Uh, it allows for larger data set processing. And you can see here uh, how we created this mesh. It has just <coughs> it has just uh, the 2, d 2 and 2.5D so it doesn't contain what's below. This is a little tree so it, sh it shows the tree as a tower. The source data, uh, you can choose the sparse point cloud for the fast and low quality model generation, uh, but we want to use dense point cloud uh, for high quality output. So you can see here, this is based on sparse point cloud and this is based on dense point cloud. Also, you can set the maximum face count. This is low face count. You can see here one face. Here is one huge face. And here you can't even see the faces because they're so tiny. So you can uh, set the maximal face count in your final mesh. B uh, take it into account that the more faces you have, the larger is your, uh, your final 3D model. Optional, you can also edit mesh. Um, uh, one very important feature in editing mesh is close holes tool. It repairs your model in the reconstruction pr proce procedure um, by filling the holes. Sometimes the, um, uh, the faces contain holes, so they're not uh, closed. Uh, it's not a closed surface. It's necessary for the volumes calculation. We're going to calculate volumes in the next assignment. So here is how you do it. You go to tools, mesh and close holes and it's necessary for volume calculation to close all 100% of holes. There is also, I'm sorry, a decimation tool that decreases the geometric resolution of the model in rep uh, by replacing high resolution mesh with a lower resolution one. Uh, it's necessary sometimes if you have a limit uh, for the size of your, uh, of your uh, mesh, of your final 3D model, as I mentioned before, larger, uh, uh, the more faces, the larger is your final 3D model. Optional, you can also edit mesh manually. As I selected here, faces here and remove them. You can also use automatic filtering based on specific criterion of the connect, uh, connected component size and the polygon size. And here you can, uh, you have, an, uh, as I mentioned, the example of manual polygon removal. You can also fix the mesh uh, topology and important feature is that you can edit the mesh in the external program. So you can export the mesh, edit it in the program, and then import the edited mesh back. So uh, the 3D, uh, it's more, more for um, making, for example, the facade of a building pretty. And then uh, because um, Agisoft uh, doesn't have 
uh, tools that some of the 3D uh, modeling software has have, and you can then import the mesh back into the program. Next, what we need, we need to pack uh, the texture into the, so each of the faces needs to be right now colored. Uh, and it, it affects the quality of the final model. So here you can see how the texture is built. Texture mapping modes are, there are multiple, and for us, this three uh, relevant are, are this first three. The generic mapping mode that creates uh, as uniform texture as possible and adaptive orthophoto. Adaptive orthophoto divides the, uh, the, the object surface into two parts. There is a flat part and vertical part. Then the flat part is textured using the orthographic projection and the vertical regions are textured separately to maintain the accurate texture representation. So if you have uh, um, an aerial topogra uh, photography of places with a lot of buildings, you would like to use adaptive orthophoto in order for the vertical regions, so the, the walls of the buildings to be, uh, to be textured separately. Uh, and adaptive orthophoto uh, have, has the uh, more compact texture representation only for the nearly planar scenes and uh, also the good texture quality for vertical surfaces. Orthophoto is uh, just like the adaptive orthophoto, but only in this pl uh, planar uh, mode. So the whole object surface is, is textured in the orthographic projection. And as the result, even more compact texture representation than in adaptive orthophoto, but it's also at the expense of texture quality in the vertical regions. There are also, as I mentioned, uh, other uh, texture mapping modes, but they are not used for the aerial, geog uh, aerial uh, photography. We're almost at the end of our processing. Right now we are ge generating the DSM, so the digital surface model. Uh, and you also have parameters uh, that you have to set. The source data here, source data, Oh, sorry, you need to choose the dense cloud because we don't want to, the other option is sparse point cloud. We don't want to use um, the uh, less accurate sparse point cloud as our source for our mesh, for our uh, digital surface model. Uh, then interpolation, you can have a disabled or enabled. Inter disabled leads to accurate reconstru reconstruction results um, because only areas corresponding to the dense point cloud are reconstructed. But if you have holes uh, or one of the DSM uh, raster cell would just be in the area where there is no point, you will have a hole in the final DSM. So if you want to, um, uh, if you want to avoid that, you choose enabled interpolation. So Agisoft will calculate the DM for all areas of the scene uh, that are visible on at least one image. And then the last part is generating orthophoto. And you also have here uh, parameters. You can build it on, on different surfaces, on DM that we just generated, generated or on the uh, mesh, we want to use the DEM. As you can see here, uh, you can always you choose the projection. And we had, in this case here, we have options. So I chose the EPSG 3358, which is the North Carolina State Plane projection in meters. And now when I chose to generate the orthophoto, I don't have an option. I always have to build the orthophoto based on the projection that is also uh, for my source data, so for DEM.
uh, now you have blending modes. There is a mosaic blending mode that implements approach with data division into several frequency domains that are blended then independently. Then there is an average one. I usually use the mosaic because it renders the best results. The average one uses the weighted average value of all pixels from individual photos and then disabled um, it assigns the color value for the pixel taken from the photo from one single photo of, that is uh, being the almost <coughs> along the normal to the reconstructor surface at that point and this one um, uh, effect, the effect of that is that you have the sharp edges you're it's not um, mosaic it's not blended uh, equal, uh, uniformly uh, the last part, uh, as we mentioned before, is exporting the result. You can export the orthophoto, you can export the DEM and the 3D model and the point cloud. And you can also, what is very interesting, uh, export the processing report. So you generate the report and what, what does this report include? Uh, include this includes the sketch of the orthophoto and of the digital elevation model. It also includes camera parameters and sur survey scheme. Uh, tide point uh, points data export and image overlap statistics. You can see here uh, when you will be doing it. I highly recommend you to take a close look at the processing report. report. It gives you. Uh, very valuable information about the processing that you've just done. It also has the camera positioning error and uh, error estimates. And if used, ground control point error estimates too. Uh, now something that I like the most, so making things easier. Um, and you can you have an option for batch processing when you click workflow. You can do batch processing and set into this little window here uh, what are the the sequence of uh, <clears throat> of processes that you want to be conducted and then they just click OK and leave the computer overnight for example because it takes sometimes several hours to process the data and in the morning find uh, uh, to find the data processed hopefully uh, without an error so there is uh, i prepared for you a scheme for pr batch processing without ground control points and with ground control points so you have uh, with ground control points manual and guided uh, option where manual when you place markers manually and then guided that's what we are going to be using good so we we import the marker positions and then just refine them but uh, the rest of um, of the queue looks the same the quality processing with ground control points uh, is uh, um, where the marker markers position are defined by their projection on the source photos so after optimizing alignment based on markers, point cloud generation and other steps needs to be performed. Uh, so first we uh, align the photos, then we optimize the alignment based on the markers, and then we have to perform all the rest of the steps for the processing. It's used for setting the coordinate system, photo alignment optimization, and measuring distances and volumes. It also can be used for marker-based chunk alignment. Uh, there is a great tutorial how to work in chunks. Chunks are used where you have uh, uh, huge data, data sets and you want to uh, process them by part by part, so chunk by chunk. And then each chunk needs to be connected to another chunk by markers. So they're like safety pins that pin uh, two pieces of fabric together in the right spot. So more on the, uh, on the ground control point placing and processing in Agisoft is in the intro to the assignment. 
What did we learn today? Uh, so we learned what's the general workflow for UAS imagery processing. How do we transfer UAS data into the processing re uh, results? So into Orthophoto, DSM, 3D model and point cloud. And we also learned how to process the data in Agis of Metashape Professional and how to set the proper parameters in the program. Thank you and good luck, good luck on your assignment.